live with Mel Milton and uh, say hi, Mel. Hi, Mel. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Before we get rolling, I just wanted to say to everybody. Now, this is this is the uh, this is the fifth dude that I've had on the podcast, and and I think a lot of people are probably thinking like, what? Where's the women? Where? Is he just going to invite the bros, you know? Uh, and I, I've invited three women, just so you know, three high-profile women. One of them turned me down flat. One of them, one of them didn't answer, and one of them gave me a maybe. And you know what maybe means, right? Go to the brother. That's what it was. Go to the brother and get him to do it first. That's right. So I had to go. I had to go with the. Uh, the minority, right? <laughs> okay, you guys. Let me just let me just tell you something. This is a podcast that I, when I made my list of people to talk to, you were, I think you were like third from the top. But I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to say who was at the top, because, you know, I don't want you to feel bad. But third from the top is pretty good. I, I, <laughs> I'm getting my words in edgewise now because when you get rolling, I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> that's what I said. That's why I know why I'm down. I'm teasing about the and I'm I'm teasing about the third down thing too. I'm all. I have a list. That number is. I have I have a list and. <laughs> Everybody is is uh, everybody on the list is just as important as everybody else. Okay, so let's let's get going uh, and let's start with let's just dig into you. Okay, okay. this is like uh, the, well we we love hanging out, right? So we've 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 had remember the three hour lunch we had a couple years ago. <laughs> that's, that's I I'm like a, a real strong pot of coffee. If you ain't used to it. <laughs> okay. Where did you start? Like, what made you? I think it's really important and really, really fun for people to find out, like, things like, you know, what made you want to be an artist? What was your road in? Because everybody has these, these different roads that they come into to illustration from. And I think yours is pretty interesting as far as, like, you know, you thinking that you weren't good enough and stuff like that, which I think we all can do. Totally. Every artist can relate I mean, are we going, like, way back? I was a child kind of situation? You can start wherever you want. <laughs> uh, you know, I think with most artists, there comes a point where uh, somebody says they're good. You know, the first of And I think, uh, you know, a lot of it was... Uh, my older brother was really good at drawing, and he was in Dungeons and Dragons, and I really stuck up for him. And so I think there was a bit that it was like, I went through for first play. Hey, look, look, I didn't do it. You know, and uh, I remember I made a point to just, I want to be better than, you know, the older brother. So I think that was the first bit of the uh, thing that. Push me to want to be good, not for anybody else, but as a kid, to want to be a beautiful girl, my older brother, hey, you know what, I, I like what you do, and um, prior to that, you know, when I was doing out to two chess, drawing, those things were there, like, hey, you're really actually good, you didn't draw a stick to give me, but you put clothes, and hat, and shirt, and shoe, shoe. And, and so, so I think the acknowledgement of that is the bit that says, hey, I'm actually doing something. And one team, my, my brother, brother acknowledged that I was doing something was the other. other. I, I think that was basically the start of my right, right there. You know, go that let, let, me, let me stop you for just a second. Uh, the audio doesn't sound the greatest on my end. And so okay. if it's not sounding good over here, it's probably not sounding good for, for people. How about me? Am I sounding good to you? You always sound, sound good. You always sound good. I'm wondering if it's the distance you are from your webcam or, or the microphone. I, I may be. Okay. okay. Let me. Do you mind if we just try that? 
How I are think you? a lot of people listen to these, uh, uh, you know, on like uh, on their phone or something as they're going to work, and I just want them to be able to. Should we do it like this? Yeah, let's let's try that. <laughs> let's, let me see. We'll use that for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. no. Okay. So let's listen. Because I, I can hear you, and I know that I mum. My wife is like, what? Speak up. <laughs> so. so. All right, cool. Let's, let's go, try let's go, that. Go. So, sorry, did I... <laughs> <laughs> Too early, <laughs> Will. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's you. So you're a Disney artist. You were a Disney artist, and one but once a Disney artist, always a Disney artist, right? That name carries and follows, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, and, sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, I remember you telling me a while back that uh, that was like your, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff, but that that was like a huge goal. That was like the you had that as a as a target to get there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think uh, everybody that uh, starts a journey has a place that motivates them to go. You know, the dreamer. And I always tell people start from that place. You know, because it's all about being able to say, uh, what what gets you go? What gets you going in the morning to say and do it? And, and so, so I think it, it leads a little bit for people to have that way. You know, I waited so late in the game that it was hard for me to, to go, uh, where do I want to want? And so that place was local, and a lot of my friends weren't there. So I was like, okay, I can do that. It would be nice to get on there. But uh, I, I never thought that it would happen. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. So... Back, you know, it was. I didn't really establish why I wanted to get on there. I think the audio isn't working. No. No. It's too. It's. It's not. I know. It's. It's. I think it has to do with maybe going to that stereo thing and or the studio setting. Should I try? I didn't. I didn't do. Do you want me to go to studio? Let's have you go there and just see. Just to see if that. Yeah, yeah. It's what it'll do is it will hear you and then and then it'll uh, back out and then it goes real quiet and then we can hear you again and then it goes real quiet. So it's too hard to follow the conversation. Okay. Did you switch you, it there? You there? Yeah, I switched it. Oh, that sounds. I think that sounds better. Keep talking. Okay. So we're all good with that. It's not going to do. That's way better. That's way, way better. Way better? Yeah. The only bad thing is okay, I'm, getting, yeah, yeah. I'm getting the echo. I'm going to go get my, so, I'm going to get my earbuds. Okay, I'm going to put okay. my headphones on too. Let's see here. All right, get some mail Does in my ear here. Does that still come good? With it's it's really good. It's really good. Yes. Okay, so, because okay. I think that was messing me up because I was hearing about a bunch of me talking back. Yeah. No, this is this is awesome. The only bad thing is that we're, I think we might have uh, we might the, the only the stalwarts are going to stick through the beginning of it, but the cool thing is okay. it's good now. It's really good. Okay. This is awesome. All right. So we're all cl much clearer. Yes, communication is so important in these things, right? Yes. All right. Okay. So let me. Um, while we're doing this, I like to switch and show some of your work. Go ahead. Is that cool? Now the thing yeah. is, I don't know how to lock. So when I'm talking, people can actually see that you do this oh. really cool stuff. You know. Um, <laughs> And this is the stuff that this is some of the stuff you've done on your own. So oh, maybe most we'll... everything on there. That's I, I think the thing is is a lot of people think that I do most of this stuff for like a living. But uh, even while I was at Disney, I was animator, not 
not a concept person. So uh-huh. most everything that I've Comic Con was the first time I ever sold art to the public. The, this know, last Comic Con, just a few weeks, just, just a week a, ago. Yeah, just it was yeah. my first foray into. Hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. I, I actually did it more to um, get over that. Uh-huh. You know? It's. I know I do want to make a living out of it for myself, not not by Comic Con uh, per se, but you know, just to be able to make money off of my art, and so. I, it was one of those test it just to see how it would work right and it, it, you know it's i think when you work and have a salary it's it's uh for as long as i did it's hard to go to somebody who's just a fan and likes the work to be able to sit and say hey i'll charge you for this uh-huh you know especially because you know most of all the drawings that i've done are just like uh you know, when I wake up in the morning or right before I go to bed, just to clear my mind, kind of situation. And, and this is just like see on, I, I, this, ahead, is just, this is just stuff like that just comes to mind. I mean, like I mean, you just wake up and just decide, okay, I'm going to do some Punisher. Yeah, I I spend a lot. If you look, there's such a variety of different techniques and. And, uh, you know, the goal was always to just draw well enough to do 2D animation. I guess, I guess that's where uh, my drawing has come from, because I've never felt uh, good, and I never went to a traditional school, and I started so late in the game that it was uh, it was just one of those things like, um, could I improve enough to do it traditionally animate? And then when mm-hmm. I learned... Uh, when I went to school for 3D animation... Where'd you go? I went to Animation Mentor. And okay. so, uh, by learning the 3D and then doing 3D in games actually helped my drawings out a lot more because then I started thinking of... Uh, because of working in 3D, it helped me to think of the form and what was going on. Whereas most people like me, we don't. I don't care if my... If my if my image actually works, it could be turned into a, a sculpture. But yeah. but that also means that if you, well, what I'm trying to say is, my drawings aren't as good as yours because of that. <laughs> no, well, see, I think it just all depends on what you what you're trying to accomplish. I think that's a lot of people when they get into drawing, they just want to draw to get good, and it's like they don't have a reason why they want to get good. Right. You know, and so Mm -hmm. I I think for me there was a bit, um, one of the first things that I came across that helped me out to improve was I was like, man, I loved people like uh, 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 Shane Glines and uh, Bruce Timms who had had control of really long, curvy lines and, and still made women look like women. So if you look at a lot of my drawings are based off of women because uh, to me it was like you could draw monsters, you can draw uh, muscly dudes and get away without proper anatomy. But for to draw women and still keep them looking feminine was quite the trick. So I spent a lot uh-huh. of my time... Uh, wanting to master that. So that was the first thing that gave me, uh, you know, a goal to sit and say, why do I want to improve? And the reason why I wanted to improve, like I right. said, was to be able to understand and be more confident in my line. And I figured if I can draw women with those kind of lines, that it'll get me there faster. Is that just uh, like a... Is, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, fa- and fast, you know, because uh, I think my one blog is close to 14, 12, 14 years old, something like that. And so, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I started my blog. If, yeah, if you go to melmade.blogspot.com. Boom. And you can go look at the. The archive. You know, the, were you? The, yeah, go to the. Archive. Were you there? Were you? Did you start your blog when they like right when they opened it up? I don't see. Uh, go go up top. Go keep going up the top of the list of names. There, right there in the middle, blog archive. It's just a pull down. 
Holy cow. Yeah, so if you go down, let's see, so we're 2014. So 10 years. 2005 oh was, you know. And that's, I, and that's, I, I started the blog at the beginning of my animation, you know, right before uh-huh. I went to school and I wanted to do those things. So, I mean, you can, you can listen to my brain at that time up until now, you know, but I seriously got back into drawing, like trying to learn on purpose when I turned 30. I believe when I met my wife and I was so, like, I so, have no skill. So prior to so 30 years old. 30 years, that's encouraging. So 30 years old, how old are you now? Are you, do you get I that will out? Be, I'll be 44 in October. No. You look like you're 33, 34. <laughs> it's the toys, they fool you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you, so you're saying you want us to believe that at age 30 you couldn't draw. Uh, I had... You know, I can understand. Like when I tell people when I started drawing at thirty, I did have that um, height. I, I can't explain it. And at the time when I was there, I you know I'd I'd be like, what? Why is it that I didn't feel there was something in my drawings that I felt was missing? But because I'd never been taught or didn't understand how to go about learning it, and I was like at that point, I was like. You know, I don't want to go back to school. I don't want to go do four years of art school. It, it was right. It was one of those things like, if I did that, and then I put all that kind of debt on me, yeah, my wife, we would have never been married. You know, because I was just kind of like, I want to figure it out without the pressure of worrying about her and all that. So, I had that high school kind of learning where everybody loved what you did in high school, and and. To me, because I'd never put it out there to judge in a professional setting, so there was uh-huh. a lot of things like uh, that I held on to that when I when I till I was thirty, kind of like things like if it doesn't come out of your head, uh, then it's not original, right. and you're not an artist. You know. Then when I got to the studios and I realized when I got my first real game job. And watched how artists did. I was like, I was lied to for years. I'm like, wait a second, you're using reference. You're using, uh, you're using all these cheat things. And I felt if I would like had known that, you know, that maybe because it just felt so impossible uh-huh. to learn it all. I always felt like I was too stupid to be able to learn these things. It was like, uh, you know, I- like anatomy to me was like I watched the guys that did anatomy and I didn't do it. I didn't do actually a drawing like live drawing. I must've been close to 40. It was, it was when I was at did my last, probably my last year at, at Disney interactive is when uh-huh. I did my first life, like sit down with a live model and draw. And I remember I was, I was like, what, you know, like, uh, I don't do this. And, right. uh, you know, and I got a lot of great tips out of it, and I wish I would have done it earlier. But again, because of my background, I was like, "There's, it's too much." And for me, my study and what actually ended up helping me study was cartoons. You know, it was, uh-huh. you know, because watching cartoons move, and like I said, Bruce Timm's, uh, you know, like the animated uh, Justice League and Batman. Watching those simple shapes, you know, helped me to get rid of all the details. Because I noticed when I was first starting out, when I did go look at Life Drawing, I got caught up in details. And, yeah, it was it was a hot, I, I was a mess. I was like, <laughs> there's no way I can learn this crap. Right. You know, and, and then on top of that, at that time, I couldn't justify learning it and spending that kind of effort in something that I couldn't see as I would use it. So I know there's a lot of artists who are like, you know, oh, anime, you know, there's anime, and I don't draw realistically, so I study anime, which is fine. I don't look as, because like I said, a lot of things I study were cartoons, but and I realized the further I went down and the more I understood the simplicity of what I was studying, uh-huh. then I started realizing those same principles apply to life drawing. Right. You know? Well, and that's and that's one of the things I love about your work is you, you've got, you've figured out this magical way to 
reduce things down into these amazing shapes because I'm a shape guy. You know that. Yeah. No, no, no. I, that's and why I love it. I'm a shape guy. Yes. <laughs> but but you've done it in a way that's anatomically correct, you know, or that I works. <laughs> well, that works. Well, and, no, I, I've learned roadmaps, and that's why I was saying there was things by studying the simpler things. I, I think it helped me early on because I was kind of like. Uh, uh, I don't know what the muscles are named, and I didn't know what was the bones and why and how they affected all those things. It seemed like so much an overwhelming amount of information you needed to know. Right. And as I studied the cartoons, it was like it was I was getting out of my head. You know, like when you when you draw the arms or you draw the legs, instead of thinking of it as a leg or thinking of it as a, an arm, I was just looking at the shape. Uh -huh. You know, I was like boiling it down to its essence. Right. And that's, I think that's what you're trying to go for, you know, is being able to do that. And so I think the cartoony helped, <clears throat> but I noticed the more excited that I got about doing it and understanding that that whole principle applies to any object, any landscape, any anything like that at all, it's all applicable. Light and shadow is just right, shapes. Right, right. And so the more I went and simplified it, it helped me to, you know, squint, basically. Like, just mm -hmm. squint at things and not look at, and not get caught up in the details. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'll get focused on it. And so uh, that's why I love sketching is because it's, it's, I try to, boil it down simply and quickly without getting caught up in details. So. If you had told yourself, okay, so the 44-year-old Mel tells the 30-year-old Mel who, if you had said that, don't get caught up in details, would you have understood it then? Because I don't think I would have. It's a hard one because even in, in the life drawing, I, I went... Uh, one of my buddies, uh, Brian Leffler, I remember one, that first sitting inside that uh, life drawing at Avalanche. I remember I was like, I asked him, I'm like, man, because he, he would just awesome with life. I, anytime I watch somebody who can life draw, I'm like, man, what, what it would it be like to handle stuff that right, way? Right, right. And, uh, you know, he gave me that bit like, well, it's, you know, look at the shapes. Block out the shapes. And, and, and even in that time. I had no I mean I kind of knew what he was talking about. Uh-huh. But again, you know, from an from an animator's perspective, you know, it was like the shadows and lights. I'm like, I it's again, I felt too dumb at that time. It's like a you for know? it's all foreign at that. Point. Right, right. I was like lights. Well, I mean, I tell color. my students, I tell my students all the time to, you know, the, the biggest challenge you'll have is to see the bigger shapes, the bigger the bigger objects, the bigger constructions, and the details are constantly screaming at you, look at me, look at me, you know, and notice me. And your and your biggest job is to to not see those and to try to see those bigger shapes. And I'm I don't even under know if if I would understand that, if I'm sitting there as a student and you can't reverse engineer it all the way, you know, and know what it's like to be a student again but well I think uh, you gotta understand how your brain works first off mm -hmm. and so I, I read an article that you know if why the reason why we procrastinate on certain things is because it's like if our mind doesn't see a purpose on how to utilize the information it won't stick it'll be like I need to get something that makes me feel good now this yeah. <laughs> information is making me feel stupid. That's perfect. And so, yeah, and, and, I, and I just read this. I just read this. And so, to me, it's like this is a normal part of the process. This is something like when you get into that mode and you look at something, and if it's not, if you're not, you know, sticking on it, on that information, this is something the way you, you need to look at it for yourself is – Try how how can you make that thing relevant in your world? So the more I realized, when I sit and say, rather than dismissing something, truly look at it and say, you know, it may not make sense. So like I'm just moving into coloring and painting and all this stuff. The more I get into it, it just seems like this complex thing. 
<clears throat> but the trick is, is to condition yourself to sit and say every time that something comes across is like how you know what you're what you're really asking is, is how is this relevant in my world how can i find a way to utilize this stuff in my world right and so this is the journey i'm just on now is to find relevance in everything that i do regardless of just the art i realize that all of it plays a, a role in my art you know and so i'm trying to add as much as i can and I, you know, and there's a bit of me that's like, man, if I would have known this stuff earlier, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, you know, because I think there's this process, you know, get it in your mind. I start this journey as an artist. I need the techniques. You know, a lot of the questions I get are like, hey, you know, what's a good technique? Right. And, and what I've started realizing is, is it's not in the techniques. I could give you techniques all day long, but like you said, how can you recognize those techniques as something that is valuable to you. Right, and so right. I tell people it's like what I learned and it took me this long to learn was is if you look at your art it's just a choice. You it's it's what does this straight line do in comparison to this curved line? You know, do I want it to read hard? Do I want it to read soft? And it, it's based off the artist's choice of what that line means yeah and so and then you should be comfortable with that choice you should be able to sit and say i'm there but a lot of artists don't get to that point they don't feel like their lines are they're they're in control of their stuff mm -hmm. as well as they want to be but that's the trick of being human is you know we have this idea of what we want in our head right and it we're never going to live up to it there's no way we'll live up to what's in our head and so it's it's coming to the point where it's like, how can I improve? How can I improve and what can I use to improve? And, and I tell people, I realize there's a couple of motivating factors when being an artist. And in the initial, for me, it was fear. I was so scared that I couldn't give my wife a good life mm -hmm. because I had no other skill set. You know, and art was, I was good at it, but I'd never... I'd never tested myself, and I was like, you know, when I actually made that decision to do it, I couldn't have told you how I did it or why I did it. I just knew that was my way, mm -hmm. and uh, the fear drove me. But then after a while, I realized that's not a great place to create from, is that <laughs> fear. Is that, it, it's, it's not. You know, and this is where most artists, they get caught up, especially... Uh, you know, you dealing with the students and the little bit that I've dealt with students, you know, a lot of them are like, hey, you know, look at the economy, look at this, look at that. Yeah. And they base their decisions and they base their choices off of external things rather than seeking out the truth within themselves. So for me, I noticed it was like it's easiest to be motivated by fear. It's easy to be that way. It's yeah. I was like, I look back at my journey and I'm like, the time at the beginning of my my journey was easy. It was clear cut. There was nobody that could tell me different because I was like, I got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get somewhere and you and you feel like you've gotten somewhere, and then I, I realize there's a second kind of fear that comes into play, and that's the fear of I don't want to lose what I have, and that's that's crippling. That's crippling. So, That's much more than the fear that drives you to do it. So you're saying it, that uh, initially it's the fear of not being able to earn a living. Because I identify with this. Yes. Everything you're saying. Um, I got married early. I uh, found the right woman. And it's still with her today. And uh, hopefully she sticks with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand that one. But uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, we're great. But... Um, the, the cool thing is, uh, I think in the beginning was, yeah, like, like I want to do this. this. This is where my head was. I want to do this for a living because I love it so much. I realize that I'm horrible at it. And so that's scary. And I, don't, I didn't want my wife to lose faith in me because I knew if she did, she'd probably give me that hint. I was always waiting for that hint of, hey, uh, you could maybe do something else. And I just, I was deathly afraid of hearing those words. So it was like, the, like what you said, the fear was, 
I need to stay a step ahead so that she's impressed, so that she has faith, so that she'll let me continue to not be grown up. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, but the thing is, is see, and that's the funny thing, because we look at our wives as waiting for them to drop the hammer. Well, this ain't working out. Right. But the thing is, is, is when a wife understands that desire, that bit, she knows that that's a benefit. And so I looked at it as my wife would have never, she still to this day would never check out on my ability. She's always believed it and always wanted me to sit here and make the decision. So that was the thing, as I said, as I went along my journey, I realized, I was like, how, how can my wife have that faith in me and I don't, right. you know, especially after somebody's, you know, like people say, hey, you've made it somewhere. Right. Made it where? Where where did I make it? So right. so that, that that's the facade is is that, you know, it's as I've gone through this journey, some of the things that I realized was is, is like I e- even when I got to that place, I I actually more so when I got to that place, I had less self-esteem and I had less less faith in myself when I got to a place and I felt like every day I was living the I'm, I'm fooling. I'm, I'm faking it. I'm faking so it. This somebody's is, gonna pull me out. This is you're at Disney feeling this way. Oh yeah, I was, I was, and I think, I think for me because I wasn't, I didn't go the normal route. You know, I was so excited when I got in, and you know, the first three years I was an interface designer. You know, mm-hmm. but watching people do what I wanted to do, man, I want to do that. And it was like around, you're not good enough. You don't have the chops to do it. Mm-hmm. And so it was quite depressing. But I had nothing else to lose. You know, like I, like I told my wife, I was like, I'm gonna fight, you know, tooth and nail to show her that you know I have some quality. And because she was willing to marry me. Because this was something I thought would never happen. Like, I I was a complete loser, you know. Not a complete loser. There was things fundamentally that I had, but because I put myself so low uh, on the spectrum of a human being that it was like, how could I get anything? And she was enough, just her saying that she would marry me was enough for me to care about myself. So once I started caring about myself in that, like I said, it was more of the fear. But when I got to that place where... Hey, you know, I, w- I was doing the Smurfs book. I was at Disney and, you know, brand new house, you know, brand new daughter. And people could have came outside of my life and said, man, I want to be where you're at. You've got it all. Yeah. And I was at my most miserable. And I realized what it was is I would never really determined this as success for myself. It was... It was when I got there, I felt like I was wearing somebody else's success, and I was miserable because it was, it was, you can't get to where you want to go mm-hmm. if you don't know exactly where you want to go. Well, and doesn't it change over time? Where you, I mean, where you want to go, and also, don't we set up? Um, we look, we, I think, from a child, we grow up, you know, going, well, I can't wait till I'm five because then I can yeah. go to school. It would just be so great if I was five, and then you're five, and now you're in school, and then it's like, oh, I'm the, I'm the, the bottom of the totem pole here, you know. But wouldn't it be great when I'm in sixth grade, and then I'm the king of everything? So we go through those, um, and I think we still do it as adults. We're in college, and we haven't learned that. Guess what? Uh, there is never going to be that one thing that you achieve where you just go, ah, I'm happy now. I'm, I'm happy now, and. Uh, there's nothing else. I'm just going to live off into the sunset, right? And, but I think that I'm, one of the reasons that, you know, why, why I do this podcast is for is for students and people that are starting out, even 30-year-olds that are starting out or, or even older, 40, 50. Some people ask me sometimes, I'm 50, my kids have left home, and is, is it too late for me? Well, no, it's never too late. You could be 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 and... If, if this is about your personal happiness, so yes. it's never it's never too late. But you you probably I'm guessing. Don't tell me if I'm wrong. But Go. you placed Disney on a pedestal before you got there. Oh, of course. I mean, right? Like I said, it's it's uh, to watch all those guys. You know, 
and uh, a lot of those guys I contacted beforehand because again, you know, the brother in Utah. Uh, I'm quite on the outskirts of the norm here. And so, and then in the field where I, you know, rarely get a chance to see minorities even make it to that field. Right, right. You know, especially if you don't see somebody doing it, you want to be able to sit and say, is this believable for me? Which I told you, that's why I sit and I, I, I said for myself, if I can help anybody along the lines, because mm -hmm. there's nobody, I, I'm not doing, I didn't do anything super spectacular, super special, but what I did come to the conclusion was, uh, is I'm worth it, you know, is yeah. I'm worth it, and and I shouldn't let anybody dictate that for me. So, right. so like I tell, you know, like you're saying, they have all these people who are like, you know, is it too late to do this and too late to do that? It's all right to go ask opinions on these things, but the thing is, is each and every individual has this answer within themselves. Even when I started changing where I was at, what I realized was is all the questions that I ask everybody, I have them within myself. It's mm -hmm. it's my choice to make it. You know, if, if you think uh, that the, you know, that the economy is not going to yield you a job, you're right. You're completely right. But there are people who are doing it successfully, and it's like, why? Because they don't, they don't, they base their decisions off of what they believe, and they have that faith. And so, like I tell, it's hard to be an artist because it's like, there's such a varying degrees of types of art and what brings to the table. And if you don't have the confidence to sit and say, my, there's a place for my art, you're right. And so, what I tell people is, is, you should be you should feel special enough to know there's a place for your art and there's everybody deserves that happiness and what mm -hmm. I that's that's what ended up helping me grow it wasn't trying to find my place amongst everybody else but to be able to sit and say I deserve that happiness just like anybody else does mm -hmm. and if I believe in that as long as I try to improve that's all I need to know you know that everything else I'll be taken care of honestly be honest to myself, true to myself, and not let anybody or any external to ask for opinions and get all that information, but truly make the decision based off of, is this beneficial to me? Does this make me happy? And does this make my environment happy? And right. as long as I know that I'm bringing positives or I'm bringing this, that's that's my fuel. That's the, that's the stuff that brings that happiness into my art. It's, you know, it's not trying to be anybody else, but understand that me doing my art every day, I've already been doing it. I just didn't realize why I was doing this because it's in that moment of doing my art, there is no past. There is no future. It's just me in the paper. It's me enjoying, enjoying life. And so I've learned with my art that it's not about how great it is in the moment. But that it's a gift to myself. It's a gift to sit and say, it makes me happy. If somebody else wants to enjoy it, hey, bonus. But in, first and foremost, it's for me. It's, you have to, it's yeah, for you me have to, to sit and say, right. And we all have personal. this. Right. It's, we all have this. And so you, you, know, you try to find out, how can I make money off of this? This is where most people, it's like, I get this happiness, but... You know, um, how do I get monetary value out of it? This is what I'm going through now. So, this so that's that's that was exactly going to be my next question. Does money corrupt art? Can money corrupt art? The individual, the way the individual goes about it, can. So, like I tell people, <clears throat> okay, for instance, I used to be a smoker, and it was like, you know, my wife would say, you know, smoking's bad for you. And I'd look at her and I'd say, uh, you ask any smoker, they know this. They know this bit of information. I know it's bad for me, but I will continue to do it. The question I needed to ask myself is, why? Why would I do something knowing it's bad for me? Why would I do that? And so we go into that, and it's basically, it boils down to that I think that I'm less of somebody else. And so I look at, and it's like, it's the, the, the idea of how people use money in their minds. It's, what are you going to do with that money? I tell people all the time, they'll say, man, if I had a million dollars in the bank, I would be set. What would you do with it? What do you like? I don't know. I'm more like, 
if you had a million dollars, you look at these you look at these athletes, you look at these superstars that get money, and you watch their lives implode when they get it, right. because they've never addressed what that money means to them. So like right. I look, and I'm like, if you want money, there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's define what that money will do for you. And so as I went through the journey, I was getting the money. I was you know getting taken care of financially with my art. But you're talking, you're talking. You're talking about at Disney. Oh, I don't. All over the span, like over my career, I was looking, okay. and you know, I went from that the the starving artist to, hey, I don't worry. You know, I don't worry about bills. And so there, there comes a time where it's like, if you had all that money, and this is what most people don't think, because early on. I want money. I want to pay my bills. I want. I want the nice house. I want the nice cars. And like I said, that fuels it. Mm -hmm. That fuels it. And then you get to that place when you have those things. And now, like I said, it changes to a different type of fear. Crap! How do I hold on to that? And and that I realized in that moment, I was having a hard time creating. I became cynical. I became hardened. I became like, why do I have to continue to prove myself in this industry? I don't want this. And nobody was giving me even after all that time and I'm looking and I'm like a day's coming up where I'm phased out of the industry because I become I, I don't become relevant and so that worry that fear became back but it came back in a way that kept me from doing it. and so I went around asking everybody hey you know uh, do you feel this do you worry about this and, and a lot of the people that I was asking this question were like well you know I'm in a good spot this is good enough mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like the answer was the, the answer was already with me as I was asking these people. But I was going crazy because I'm all sitting here. I wanted to hear something else. I wanted to hear somebody go. I'm fueled up for the for the next part. I'm fueled up and I'm jazzed to go into this further than I, further than this. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't seeing it. I was seeing so a lot of people. So you're saying you're saying you're seeing people at where you were working. That were just kind of phoning it in, just like they they were just there for the job. I Is see this. I just see it as like, you know, because like I said, I think there's a bit because I I was looking at my what I consider success, and again, it's hard to see it now. You know, when I was going through at that moment where there's that success, there's a bit of. Don't question. This is a good thing. This is what you were fighting for to be at this place. Right. Right. And so it's like. But there's not a discussion about it. There's not, I, I mean, I was going to doctors, lawyers, I mean, people who were like top of their, not outside of the art world, because I was like, I need to find out what's next. What is, what do I go from here? Like I said, when you're a student or you're just starting your journey, it's clear cut. It's, I just want to be successful. I want acknowledgement. I want all these things. All those things were simple mm -hmm. in comparison to now looking at it. But, but in the beginning when you're going through it, it's just so tough that this is all you can focus on. And like you said, when there are certain things, when you're ready for them, will come into oh, a technique makes sense. And I noticed that the techniques made more sense the happier I was. Mm -hmm. But at, you know, at, at my highest point, I wasn't happy. So a lot of things weren't making sense. I couldn't see the importance of them. And so my thing was, is I was questioning it. But I wasn't hearing a whole lot of dialogue from anybody about it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, like being a parent, you always hear, ah, it's tough being a parent. That's all you hear. Right. And I was like, when I became a parent, holy crap, I was like, hey, who, somebody give me some information. So as an artist, <clears throat> like I said, when I got to that point where I questioned why, even why I was doing it, what was this? I've lost, and I remember I became the person who I thought I'd never become. Because, like I said, when I got in, because I was so late to the game, and when I started seeing it, I was so jazzed. I was so excited because it was like I didn't get that experience early. I didn't get all the things like graduating from high school or or doing all those type of things. So when I got into art, I was like, this is this is something special to me. And I thought I'll always have that excitement about it. But I noticed I didn't at my most successful. And so, so that's so. There's a couple things that I want to make sure. Do you did you see people in the studios that you've worked in that were totally content and totally happy with their job? Again, I couldn't go under their heads. Like if I were to sit and say, I, I, I 
I think there's people who, when you have a goal, when you have this place, and it's like if, if, if you attain it, I think, yeah, that's fine. But I think every human has that bit where they want to progress in mm -hmm. some way or some mm -hmm. form. And I think you can stay in that place for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you can be in that place, and I don't think it's a bad place if that if you're com if you're comfortable with it. For me, as an artist, I had the more I learn, the more I sit and I go, man, I don't know crap, and I want to know more. I want to be excited about it. It's mm -hmm. not it's not about work. It's not about doing it. Like I said, when I changed from professional to professional hobbyist, is when I freed myself. Because I noticed when I came home, well, I do it for a living. I don't need to improve anymore. I right. get that satisfaction from work. But right. in the same sense, to me, it was like I'm doing somebody else's work. I'm doing somebody else's idea. And most of those days, it's like I put whatever I was doing and it would get hammered. Well, it's right. not good enough. And it was taxing because it felt like I'm doing all this stuff, but I still have to prove that I'm valid in this industry. And right. it was like wait a second, when does that end? When does that... And that's what I realized, is I never stopped to look and say, do you do you appreciate your art? Do you feel like it's in a good spot? And it's like, I'm not, I'm not happy or content with where I'm at skill-wise. Mm -hmm. But that's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's freeing to be, I don't know what I'm doing, but... To have that fear, like I said, you're at a job or you're at the studio. I don't know what I'm doing. Doesn't feel good because then mm -hmm. it makes you feel like I'm gonna lose my job and I'm gonna lose those <laughs> things. Whereas now, I, I sit and I go, I have no idea, but I'm so excited that I will find other avenues, not just my art, but other avenues to be able to sit and say, man, oh, I see the relevance of this in my world, and right. it opens up my experience. And so that's why I said. Do I think that people could be happy with the studio? Yeah, I, I don't think it's impossible to be there, but I just look for myself. I'm talking about my experience for myself as right, I walk right, right. through it. You know, no, and that's all, that's all I'm asking. Like, I, I would assume that there are quite a few people who have the, a different personality than we do because I, I've talked to you before about this exact same thing. Some of the worst, uh, some of the worst times of my life have been working for for clients where the project wasn't going well, work I can I can think of a lot of them. I'm not going to name them, but I can I can certainly <laughs> think of a lot <laughs> of a lot of them that I I would tell my wife I would rather be outside digging a ditch for somebody where it's mindless, you know, just mind numbing work where I can my my brain is free to wander and do other things rather than Focusing my brain power or a thing in front of me that I hate because I've lost control of it because someone else is controlling it. Now, on the other hand, I have also done some client work that has been in, incredibly inspiring, um, that has been some of the best work that I've done. I would say most of the best work that I've done has not been for clients, but I, I think there's I think it can work both ways. But I think that the tendency is for a lot of times for client work to go south on you. And I think those are the times that just make you go into those places that you're talking about. Where Yes. You know. That's why I say when you're comfortable with who you are as an artist, when you're, when you're like, I noticed once I got to that point, it's like if you can take and take the idea of what you're doing, what you're working, whatever it is you're working on, and you can sit and put that kind of love into stuff that you don't like. And stuff that, like I said, put it in and pour your efforts into without, like I said, working for a client is harder because now you have your ego in the way. You know, it's like, oh, I did this and I, I can put my love into it. But as soon as somebody says, hey, man, you know what? That just doesn't make me happy. What mm -hmm. about this? It starts messing with you because you're sitting here going like, I put this love into it. But if you can right. put the love into it, condition yourself to sit and say, you know what? If the person's not happy, I'll continue to fix it because I know this is an improvement. It's, it's something, it's a way to be able to sit and say, okay, how can I improve? And then be thankful for being able to do those things. That's the problem that I was having. And that's why I said what I realized was, is like, it, it's 
you're going to have a crappy job, especially you go work in the studios. And I think people think that going to the studios is this utopia. Right. And so, like, I like to... I like to share that whole, you know, when I got into it, I got to work on some really cool stuff, you know, like the, the Toy Story 3 stuff was an amazing project, the Cars 2 was an amazing project, and then Hannah Montana, and from an anime, I was like, man, I cannot listen to Hannah Montana's voice anymore, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was horrible, but that's what I'm seeing, there's, there's, there's an offset, you know, and I think people think, well, I get to the studio, and it justifies completely who I am as an artist. It, mm -hmm. it says, hey, you've arrived. But then I, I didn't feel like for myself that that was the whole the whole kit and caboodle. For me, I was like, I like it. I like the idea. I love being able to go in conversation and say, oh, yeah, I work, I work, I work at Disney because people could relate to that. Right. And it's like I could see that that's not going to last. Or, you know, it's it, it was... You know, the hours and the stress, and when I became first, you know, new dad, I was like, I can't do this the rest of my life, you know? And so it's, it's, it's like, man, I, what is that? I want to do my art for the rest of my life, but I can't be in that mode 24-7 with the fear. Right. But I notice when I'm happy, I can be in that mode for as long as you want me to be in. You know, right. Because I'm not focusing on how well this drawing turned out or how well I still look at my art like you're pulling up stuff and I'm like, <laughs> oh man, it's still hard for me to look. At it. <laughs> Even though I see the improvement of where I was, right. In my mind, I see the improvement of where it could go. But and, the, and that's because you're a perfectionist, and that's don't you think that's a requirement? That's to, human. But it's, but but I mean, to be a successful artist, if you're if you look at the stuff that you're doing and you and you just love everything you do, then you're either lying to yourself or you're not an artist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know well, what I, mean? I was like, I tell people, if I was happy with my work, I wouldn't post. The reason why I post, the reason why I post as often as I do, mm -hmm. is because I understand that it's not about, I'll, I'll look at flaws left and right. Every picture you pull up, I'll be oh, man, oh. Like, <laughs> but I, I notice if I throw it up, and once it's out of, working view that it's it, I feel safe to analyze it that I let it go it's uh -huh. already done but what is it that I can take with me for the next one and so it's like I like being able to analyze it I like being able to sit and say oh man I see my mistakes now and I understand now more so than I did when I started that it's the mistakes that yield your your greatest information oh yeah and so you have to appreciate the mistakes as much as you do all the successful pictures. Right. And so I think that's where most people, you'll hear them, and they'll go, oh, man, I did this crappy drawing. And it's like, but wait, if you know you're going to be a successful artist down the road, it, it, you know, so Will Terry becomes super mega star, <laughs> right? Super mega star, he, he's, he's Mr. Bad Ace, you know, and, and, and you were to go back and look at your past self and talk about all the stuff you did, and you say, here's all the mistakes I did. You would still go on that journey because there's the the exciting the exciting place that you're gonna be. So if most people understood that it's like, hey, if you can look at your mistakes and understand that those mistakes will still get you to where you're going, you know, if 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 you have a, a starting point and an end point, it's like some days there's gonna be a roadblock. And by understanding that there's other there's other streets I can take, I you know, but a lot of people see the roadblock and I'm gonna go back home. Because I, I'm not smart enough to get around this roadblock. Right. But if you sit and you go, you're happy, and you know you're going to get there, it's not about the roadblock. It's about sitting here going, like, I'm looking. I'm still looking for something else. There's something else that will get me to my destination. So like I told people, I spent a lot of time wanting to be other artists. And for the first time in my life, when I stepped out of that environment, I really looked at what success was to me. I realized I'd never made it the goal to be me. You yeah. know, so yeah. I was looking at my daughter when she was first born, and that was the catalyst where I started to crumble because I was looking at my daughter and I realized the words that were coming out of my mouth. I don't want my daughter to grow up to be me. And I'm like, this is horse crap. Who came up with this? Because every person, every human being on the face of the planet can look at their kids and go, you know what? I don't want them to grow. I want them to be better than me. Right, right, right. And I'm like, 
but why? Why is it that I don't feel like I deserve to be something more? So when I looked at it, I realized what my goal was, is to become the person I want my daughter to be. I want my daughter to sit and go, my dad lived this life, and he was content. He brought as much happy. It's not about if I did it perfect, because believe me, I'm all like, being a parent, I was like, man, I fail every day. <laughs> but, you know, and I think this is where every parent is. It's like, I fail every day, and it's hurtful because we have these people that we want to take care of. Our wives, like you said, there's that bit. I was like, man, I, I don't want to let my wife down as well. We all know these things. We all have it in us to understand these things. But it's like, why do we feel... Why do we feel that we have to put ourselves so far down below to feel anything out of our art? Especially as artists, because... Art empowers us to have this imagination to bring me into this world. So that's why I said, when I started realizing, don't just subscribe, even to, you know, when people complain about stuff. Oh, the world is messed up, and oh, there's this, and they bring this tension, and they share that tension. And my place, I believe, is if I go to my little thing, I thought, it's not, you know, like, what can I do as an individual, as an artist? What can I do? And I realized what I can do to share my experience, share my humanness, and try to put a smile on somebody else's face. To try to let mm -hmm. them know that you deserve to be happy as an artist. And if more people realize that they deserve to be happy as an artist, that's what would spread. That is the stuff that would be like, you know what, I'm not. i got enough self-esteem about myself. And that's why I said I never went back to smoking because I understood. That's why I said there's a difference between I know the information I get is correct, and I know the information. It's when you use the information properly, do you know it? But a lot of people automatically assume, I get a technique, I know it. But if you're not using it properly, then you don't know it. And right. so I look at it as like art. Everybody says, you talk to anybody and say, why do you do art? Well, it makes me happy. And if I could do this for a living, it would make me happy. And it's like, no, no, no. This is a general, this is a general thing that everybody has got, but they haven't looked further as why it makes them happy. Right. Why does it make you happy? Do and you and understand? go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and putting that goal of of just like what you, the way you said it, like so, I make the art, it makes me happy. So if I get the job making art, then I'll be happier, happy. happier. That's, yeah. Well, I think that, a lot that, of people that. think that because it's like, well, I get to do what I want to do all day. But the, the the funny thing is, there's there's. There's there's two there's two sides to that where you get the you get the guy who loves to surf, so he opens a surf shop, and now instead of surfing, he's behind the desk selling <clears throat> surf equipment and lessons and crap to other people who are out going to do the very thing that he wanted to do. Yes. Um, and I think there's a degree of that in working as a freelancer, which is what I do, and working for a studio, which is what you've done, is is that. Uh, the, that that very thing that you that made you so happy is not necessarily the thing you get to do when you get the job. Yes. yes. Right. And that's I think what you're what you a lot of what you're saying. Plus, yes. you're also saying a lot about the fact that being being a good artist, from what I'm gathering from what you're saying, is it has a lot to do with who you are as a person as well. And it's it's you're not really separating those things. It's a it's kind of a spiritual. Uh, thing you know talking about being good a good parent uh, I think a lot of those things are reflected in your work by the way I think when I look at your work I see a lot of excitement and joy for life um, and I think a lot of people you see a lot of their personality reflected in their art yes. don't you think yes I know and that's why I said it's a cho when I realize it's a choice so so for those like there was a bit like I'd rather do this then work, you know, some crap job. But in the same sense, it's like when you understand what the crap job gives to you and you can come from that place of appreciation. It doesn't, you just sit and you say, look, I'm at this crap job, but it's the money that pays the bills, does the food. It's like, do I want to do this? No, but I know it fulfills a need now. Just like a bad drawing, it mm -hmm. fulfills a need. And so mm -hmm. it's, you have to look at yourself, and that's why I was saying when you have a bit of self-esteem, you say, well, this is fine for now, but I want more for myself. Right. And then as soon as you say, I want more for myself, and you truly believe you deserve that, 
you will move on. The people you need to meet will be there. The people who, you know, will embrace you and say, you're ready for this. Because you bring something to the table that it's like, I want to be a part of that. And this is why I realized over my over my time was the happier I get, the more people want to be around me. And I was like, I don't get it. I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing prior. And I'm no special person by any means in that fact. I'm not above anybody, but it's just like... I think what people gravitate towards when they see what I do is my happiness. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's where most people go like, I'll set my goal to do what they do because they see the happiness. And that's why I tell people, it's like, but if you haven't defined your happiness, it's like, like I said, I like to live comfortably, but I have to right. define what comfortable is for me. You know, right. Right. it's like, that's why I said, you you can get all the money you want, but it's like jobs, any job will give you the money any job so you have to appreciate that you know whatever that job is or you know and that's what i realized it was like after leaving disney i went to k-12 and i was like you know i dumbed it down and i felt like i'm not as creative as i wanted to be but then i realized in that moment it's like well pretend like it is pretend like this job is the job you want you hear it all the time and it's like okay well do my best work and appreciate where you're at mm -hmm. and like i said it was giving me the opportunity but then it also helped me to see the thing that I wanted to see, to be able to sit and say, are you ready for this next part? Mm -hmm. To be able to sit and have faith, to be able to sit and say, walk away, do the things that you need to do, you're already taken care of. You already know the answers. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was able to see by putting myself, even in my negative days, or even in my days that I was having a hard time, understanding those things are a part of the process, you know? And I've noticed as I go back through my life from, you know, now to back, I was like, most of the most darkest times, as much as I wouldn't want to have gone through them, yielded me a lot more than I had ever expected. A lot know? of growth so, and stuff. Yes. To be able to analyze, like a lot of the things that had happened to me in the initial made me cynical. But as I go further down this journey, I realize how much more of the process, how sensitive everything is, and all of it, all of it is for me to be the best me. Mm -hmm. All of that, because that's my goal. It's like, I already know I'm not perfect. I already know I'm going to make mistakes, but that's the thing. It's not about being perfect. It's about improving, improving to this place. And that's where I was looking at when I got to this goal, the where, where, is, where is next? What I so, realized was there's that ultimate goal. So, you, okay, so, it's fair to say that you were, there were some things about working for Disney that you were disillusioned with. But, um, let me ask you this. So, for me, I'm working on an indie Xbox PlayStation game right now. Right. And I can promise you that the artwork that I'm creating for that game, and I'm also kind of filling in as a pseudo art director. I've never done that before, but I've, we've hired one of my students to do sprites and stuff. Uh, and, uh a few other people and stuff, but I could not have, I could not create the art that I'm making for the game if I hadn't gone through all of those uh, thousands of freelance jobs that I've had over the, the last 22 years, you know. Um, is it the same for you? Could you, could you, could you be making the art you're making today without having had the Disney experience? <clears throat> I think it eventually, because my, you know, there's things that we all know. I think there's a point where uh, you're an artist because you knew you were going to be an artist, right? You already knew it. Mm -hmm. And so by knowing that, all, all you need in that whole scheme of things is you, one, to believe it, mm -hmm. and one other person to believe it. And you're there, you know? So, like, you want to make an indie game? As long as you believe it and as long as somebody else believes it and you actually create it, that's all that needs to happen for you to be that person. Mm -hmm. And so I, I look and I'm like, I always knew I was going to be an artist, you know, and there was that, that thing that came along that started my journey, and that was my wife, my everything. And so, like, I look and I'm like, do did I need uh, Disney to do that? I would have been there eventually. The thing is, is life was calling me, and even though I put it on the shelf because I was so scared mm -hmm. and didn't want to talk about it because I wanted to leave it in my mind that I did Art was something to me that I never wanted to fail. And I looked at it back in my high school days and back in those days when everybody would just stroke my ego. I wanted that 
and I didn't want anybody to touch it because the rest of my life I had failed so badly and so miserably that it was like it was the only thing that I had that was good in my life. It was mm -hmm. the only thing that was like people made me feel special mm -hmm. at a time where I couldn't feel special about myself. And so like I look and I, I believe the time that I walked away needed to happen. You know, it's like, would I want it different? So I look at Disney as a part of the process. It's like I got there. But even then, when I got there, there was a bit like, where's next? You know what? You know because my wife is like, did you want to go to the you know feature film? Did you want to go do that stuff? And it's like it would be nice, but I said in all actuality, I said I don't see myself shooting for those things. I I mm -hmm. was like, I see myself. I want to I want to grow further than even my imagination of who I could be. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And it was like I feel like. The collaborative part in studios is a beautiful thing. I'm like, if you can get on the studios, this is a great, great learning. The hands-on is the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. And the fear of sitting here going, like, I don't understand it. Let me get a book or let me get, just learn the techniques right there on the fly is a great thing. Because a lot of people, it's like, because in that moment, you're more susceptible to keep that information because it's like, oh, crap, I can see the potential of this. But when you're in school, there isn't that importance. You know, it's like I'm paying for school. I want a good grade. But even then, there's still not something there to make it stick. So right. I see it as it helped me to create certain things a certain way, you know. And what I realize now is, is that if I want to learn anything, I just have to see how valid it is in my world. What is it that I want to say in my art? What is it that I want to leave? And most people don't, they don't have enough self-esteem to believe in what they have to say, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. it's like a lot of people are like, well, I want to find my style. And I tell people, I'm all like, style comes from understanding and and understanding what it is that you want to do and create a whim. You right. know? It's like, I, I, it's not that I wasn't influenced by gazillion bunch of people you know like i said cartoons were where i was at but it was understanding those things and saying well i see the choices they made but what choice would i make and be confident in the choices that i'm made as successful do you know what i'm saying so that's why i was oh, yeah. realizing it's just that choice the way will terry does his art you have a specific thing you have a checklist in your mind that you've gotten so many things over that's like what's my choice today what is it that i want to tell today and that's why I tell people, uh, if there's a great book by uh, The Null Approach. by uh, What's that called again? The Noble Approach. Noble. You know, it was the guy who did the uh, backgrounds for all the Chuck Jones cartoons, and I used to love that. You know, oh, the, uh -huh. you know beautiful backgrounds. And I'm like me, I'm like, uh, at some point I was like, well, I don't really do a whole lot of backgrounds. But I was like, well, let me get this book because I'd like to have the understanding. And the way he talked about it opened my eyes and helped me realize that that's what we're all trying to do as artists is, is there's, it's all right to mimic somebody, but eventually you have to, you have to show the world what's in your mind and be right. all right with it, you know, because right. it's like, that's your voice. And, you know, if, if you let somebody else influence you to change that, you have given your potential, potential uh, voice to somebody else. And so that's where I was coming to the point where it's like, believe in myself, believe who, in who I am, and tell it the way I want to tell it. It's not about being perfect. It's about sitting here going like, I'm, I'm relevant. I deserve the happiness. And I want to share my happiness with it, anybody who can have that happiness. But in the end, it's for me because my world benefits from it. My wife right. benefits from it. My daughter benefits from it. And so this is where I, was, I, was, I started realizing how spiritual art has been to me. Right. It slowed me down enough. Analyze it. You know, like I said, I'm pretty ADD. And if you look, if, if I told you and, and, and laid out my jobs, you know, I was I, there was one day I was at work uh, uh, with Lael, you know, and uh -huh. he's like, well, Mel, let's just go over the jobs. And, I mean, just from being in Utah, I think I had, uh, I think I'd, on the list, I'd come up with 50 different types of jobs that I've had just from being in Utah. This is not anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, uh, so military. I was in the military for nine months. I had never stuck with anything my whole entire life because there was nothing there. But I noticed when I did art, I locked on it like a pit bull. You know, it was like all of a sudden 
things made sense. And right. the more they make sense, the more I realize the art. But art has opened me up to the rest of it. You know, art has sat there and said, look at look at life. Look at your look at your relationships. Look at all these things. The way you analyze your art, analyze your life. Right. And so then I realized it was like, stop focusing on problems. Focus on the better parts of me, the things that I sit and find happiness that I bring to the world. And embrace those things, share them freely, you know, and be all, hey, my, hey, you know what, I'm just, I'm on a journey like anybody else. I want, I want to make, when I say I want to make money, it's not about I want to make money just for money's sake. I want to have the experiences. I want to go out. I want, to, I want my daughter to see things. I want to live comfortably and know I deserve that. You know, I deserve those things. It's not about being greedy, but being able to sit and say, I want my experiences to be as happy as they are, and know that negative experiences are going to happen, but I will always be chasing and choosing to make that happiness, and that's what fueled my art. That's why I'm like, I'm more curious than ever, and that was the thing that I noticed when I was younger, I had, and that I lost along the way after life had broken me off a couple of chunks. You yeah, know, it was like, yeah. oh, geez, I, I can't do this anymore. Right. And so, the cynic the, the person who looks at life in that way is closed off, and that's not why we're here, you know? Well, you've seen, we, I know you've seen a lot of artists that are broken, right? Like, oh, yeah. They, they've, right. Been, they've, been, they've been through some system, either a studio system or a freelance system, and, and life sort of kind of spit them out, and they're cynical, and they're often doing something completely different. Um, yes. They're not creating art anymore. Um, and and that's not to say you know I I don't want anyone to think that I'm judging you if you're if you were in that situation, and and you got spit out because things are cyclical things change and our economy has gone through a huge uh, ch transformation the internet has basically turned everything upside down in a short period of time right so that's one of the reasons why you you know I I used to know artists that uh, specifically just worked in advertising. And they got all their their work and all their self esteem through uh, those jobs that were coming in on a regular basis. Now I just uh, uh, there's a uh, Teresa Larson who we just actually just uh, uh, made a video with for our SBS. We haven't released it yet, but uh, she did a she did she taught a little master class. So this is kind of a sneak preview, just even talking about it. But she's as busy as ever and loves. Uh, from what I could gather, loves creating for her advertising clients. She's got more passion for that than I think anybody I've ever met. However, I would say most of the people that I've met that have that have gone through um, uh, and worked in advertising illustration are the complete opposite. They they kind of hate working doing that. A lot of them, um, and they're and a lot of them aren't doing it anymore because so much of that has dried up, um, and. Uh, I guess where I'm going with all this is that there there are a lot of different places to be happy, but being happy as an artist, which is what yeah, I've heard you say the happy word like a hundred times in this podcast. <laughs> that's but that isn't that isn't that a huge part of why why we're here is to be try to find happiness and to try to help others be happy. Um, you mentioned your wife and your daughter a lot. I think that we tend to compartmentalize things. We, we go to school for a career. Um, if we go to church or whatever we do for our spiritual side, we do that. If we, um, if if we go, you know, if, if going out in nature is is your your meditation, then we do that. But everything we do often is to seek happiness. Except we tend to, to say, well, your job is your job. And so, you, how many how many accountants do you hear talking about? Well, my happy happiness level today was uh, kind of on the low side, you know, I mean, like, do you think that it, that people that go into accounting or that go into the law or do you think that happiness factors high or is it more of a, I would, because I would think most money, most, most careers is about the money, right? Of course. I mean, the thing is, that's why I said, money gives you the ability to live a certain way. And so, like, I don't look at... Like I said, there's a bit of me that was like, you know, when I went on the journey, it's like, if I could make money doing what I love, that would make me happy. And, you know, to, to a certain extent, that's true. But in the same sense, it could ruin it for you if you're, if you're not ready to look at the way it is. Because the thing is, is all, to be happy... 
take a moment in your life to be able to look at one thing that made you happy, and you can bring that up anytime you want. Mm -hmm. Nobody can take that away from you. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is people get caught up with external things making them happy. So, so like for example, the Comic Con thing. You know, I went in it. Uh, you know, I was like, I'm not going to make a whole bunch of money. I don't understand. It's not my world. But what I wanted to do was is check it off my bucket list. And this was last week, right? And this was just last week. And right. so I tell people, I, I cried all three days. There was not one moment that I didn't cry. <laughs> and and and, uh, and honestly, it was because it was like this joy that I never thought that I would ever get. It wasn't like people were throwing money at me. I, you know, like my wife was like, um, you know, you got to make money sometime. Because you're giving away, you, you, I mean, yeah, you're giving, giving away, away art, right? <laughs> yeah, you're giving it all this you're, art you're, away. The whole idea is you is you're supposed to sell your art at Comic Con, right? Yes, and I was, you know, and I'm sure there was other artists going like, "Man, Mel, come on, dude, you're making it hard for me." But in the same <laughs> sense, like, uh, I, I looked at there was there was moments, you know. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll recollect this story. Hopefully, I did not cry real, but I'll just do this one real quick. So. You know, first day of Comic-Con, I get there. The reason why I want to do it is, like, there was a bit that I wanted my daughter behind the booth with me, see me. And she had got all dressed up. She saw me uh, in my, in, on my on my Facebook I had where I met Elsa, met Elsa, you know. Mm -hmm. And my daughter was like, as soon as I showed her that picture, she's like, you know Elsa? Elsa from? Frozen. You know, Frozen. The right. cosplay person. So right. she saw right. me with the cosplay. She's like, you know her? Like, that's your buddy? I want to meet her. So she had... You know, it's like that three-year-old logic, so it was totally cute. She's like, I want to go to Comic-Con so I can meet Elsa. So I'm like, oh, I want to go there. I want to have these experiences with my daughter. It would be nice to be able to be a nerd, and then my daughter can relate this experience later on when, when she's older. So I'm like, space, little time, little sleep. I didn't even think I was going to make it, but... I, I get stuff printed, I'm heading out the door, you know, I'm like, and, and, and my daughter's like, yay, I'm going to go with daddy. I'm like, no, 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 you have to go with mommy. I've got to go set up my booth, but I can't wait to see you there. She's all dressed up. She wants to, you know, <laughs> she's like little mini cosplayer, so I know she was ready to go and show strut her stuff. And so uh, I get to I get to Comic-Con, and I, I just start unloading a couple of things. My wife calls me up and is like, where's the keys? And I had the extra set of keys in my pocket. So and we didn't have another car set key, so I, you know. And then she's like, "Well, the the uh, the sorry, that's all right." So the uh, we had the car seat in there, so I was like, "We couldn't even." And then everybody that I know, their kids are all in college, so I don't know anybody with a car seat. So I'm like, "Dang, I'm gonna miss out on my daughter experiencing this first day with me." And I was depressed as all get out. Like, the whole bottom of the experience just fell out because that was the one thing I wanted to do. So as people were walking by, I was just like, you know what, I don't care. I, I was like, I check out. Because I was like, it was on me. That bit was like, I'm missing out on that happiness. And it was because I couldn't focus enough that my daughter is not here. And so, and my wife took the train up. And I'd always talk to my daughter about taking the train up. And, you know, she's like, oh, I want to ride the train. So right. she went up and had an amazing journey on the train. And they made it, and I was totally excited. Totally and you, excited. You missed out on that, right? So I'm like, they, they're coming, because I was like, it was packed that first day. I was scared they were at the stand in a line that I wouldn't see him. And when my wife showed up, I was like, wow, just the relief was like, oh. So, but in my mind, I was like, well, I can't because I'm behind the booth. I won't get to see her meet these people or do these things and interact in her little outfit. But I was happy she was there, and so. As she's walking away, I'm telling people, like, man, it's, it sucks because I won't be able to experience that first moment when she meets Elsa. And there, lo and behold, right at the corner, right as she was around in the corner, just in my visual sight, was Elsa and Anna. And they'd stop. <laughs> and my daughter was like, duh! And they took pictures with them. And I was like, I saw it. I was like, I got to see it. I, I was like, the rest of my Comic-Con is, I could have quit that day and been done. Because that was payment enough. That's what I wanted to see. And the two girls walked away, you know, and I was telling my buddy, as they came over, I was like, I got to see it. I was so excited, and I was reliving the story for them. And the Elsa and Anna girls came right by my booth. And I was like, wait, 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 hold up. I just want to give you this as a thanks. And I gave them the prints that I'd done of Elsa and Anna. And I said, you guys have made my life. And I can't thank you. And I started bawling. 
because I was like, I was so happy, and then it came full circle, and I, I gave him it, and then their dad came in and was like, that's my daughter's, and you have made my day. So it was like this huge thing that ended up transpiring, and it was moments like that that made my Comic-Con, you know, and like I tell people, if I would have looked at how the day had started off and knew that it was going to go to that super happy place, like I went from the abyss of darkness to, oh my gosh, this ended up being the best day ever, I wouldn't have known. I could have gave up and walked away at that moment. I could have just checked out and been like, but everything worked out for me to be the happiest person I could be. That's why I started realizing you know, before then, I, I understood. I'm like, you know, we go through some things that can take away from our experience, but sometimes in the grand scheme of things, they're for us to be the happiest person we can be. We just have to decide for ourselves what that happiness is and, and then say to ourselves we deserve it as human beings and right. then share that with others, you know, be able to tell others, I'm not trying to get one over on you. This is not a competition for me. I de you deserve the happiness as much as I deserve the happiness. We're all human chasing that same thing. And that's where I get, I see that a lot of people miss that out, especially as, as artists. You know, it's like, you know, uh, it's a competition. Yeah. Like I tell people, I'm all like, it's not a competition. Right. It's, 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 there's more than plenty for everybody. And it's like if you sit and you say that somebody else doesn't deserve this happiness, even if they're in, you know, if they're a total jerk, the thing is, is they're in a different stage. There's an understanding that they're missing. And would they change the way they, they, they do things if they understood it? So it's like you only want the best for anybody, especially in this mode, especially right. looking at human, because all human beings, we're, we're not all going to make the right choices all the time right. and you know it's like we already as artists berate ourselves all day long but the thing is is after all that berating we all deserve that happiness i if everybody could experience that bit of happiness that i had that day i would give it freely and to me all those prints that i gave away that time couldn't compare as a drop in the bucket to the feeling that i got yeah. and so like i tell people i'm all like if you have faith that you'll get those things. You get all the stuff that you want. If you sit and you say, I know that by doing this and taking this journey and going going all out, not only gives my, hap my, my wife happiness, my daughter happiness, and me happiness, but it, it gives strangers complete happiness. Then I think if you set out on that journey, the money will be there. You just have to listen to where it's at. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. have to listen and go, uh, you know, I know I can make good money at this and believe and have faith. It's not about, can I? If you don't have faith in it, then you can't do it. And so it's like, what I realize is, is happiness is a gauge of that. If you're doing things that make you happy, then the people you need to meet will be, meet, will be around you because they'll so set true. that happiness. You know? It's and so, so it's, true. Right. And so that's my thing is, is I want to be able to spread that like wildfire, you know, that it's like, it's not the techniques. It's not the, you know, like I had a guy who was asking me and he was telling me all the classes he was taking for school, you know. And I says, well, what's your goal? What is your end goal? Where do you want to be? And he says, I don't know. And I says, well, this is what I heard. If I take this class, this class, this class, this class, that what? You don't know where you're going to go? It's like you're taking all these classes without the intent of a place to go. So your mind is going, my place is school, which is not a bad thing, but you don't have what's what's after it what is school doing for you right. what are you getting out of school analyze why you're going to school but a lot of people don't they think oh i go to school i get a piece of paper and the job is mine and it's like no 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 analyze yourself think about what it is that you want to accomplish what's unique to you then set out on that journey you know it's like i tell people one of the surprising things when i go talk to people is like where would you want to work where are your top three places i don't know <laughs> what you don't know where you want to go you right know? It's or like what you... pro or, or in, in another question might be what projects do you want to work on yeah what are the type of things that you want to work on because that was the thing that made me go i need to evaluate because again i was like eventually i'm not going to be as valid as i once was i'm right. not going to have the ideas and people will go, well you're dated well what do you bring and it's like it's like even in my mind, I still have to have an idea of why, why I want to improve. And one of the reasons why I want to improve is to, to have that 
validity for myself to be right, able to sit right. and say, you know what, I want to. I don't see myself retiring. I've never sat there and gone, oh, there's a day where I can't wait to just give this up. It's bullcrap. I'm all like, dude, I want to do this every day. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I want to be, you know, uh, I want to be doing it to the day I die because it's it's a part of who I am. It's a part of my journey and a part of my story. Now, I would love to get paid for it up until that point, but the thing is, is it's like as long as I have faith that if I bring the love that I have for it, Till the day I die, that I will be taken care of. Yeah. That is, yeah. I have that faith. I don't, you know, like I said, I'm, I, I, I don't think that it's like, that it's like I need to be a millionaire, bazillionaire. But what I do want, I want to live comfortably. I, right. You know, my wife likes new crap. She doesn't like old crap that has to be fixed all the time. She likes right. new crap, so I have to, I have to tend to that. <laughs> I want my wife to be happy. So it's, it's like, of course, I want that. But that's why I said there's a lot of that that comes into play when you decide what you're working on. Well, there's and a, a lot of... Go ahead. I was, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you no, saying? No, no. Well, I was just going to say, uh, there's, a, there's a quote, and I'll probably screw it up, but I think it pertains to what you're saying. Uh, and it goes something like this, um, and I don't know who said it, but it's like, you know, if you don't work on your dreams, then someone will hire you to help them fulfill their dreams. Yes. And I think that that, well, it's not taught in school for sure. So we're not, you know, from an early age, we're actually taught to work on other people's dreams, right? I mean, we're taught that is the goal, to work on someone else's dream. And I think a lot of people watching and listening to this right now are probably going, what are you, they don't even know what I'm talking about. Because it's so ingrained and so entrenched to get a job, the J-O-B, right? Yes. right? Um, I was, I'm sure you were, we all were taught that's how you do it. But that's part of what I'm saying is, has been flipped upside down right now. And I was talking to Isaac Orloff and, uh, a few weeks ago, and, um, and, uh, and, there, and I interviewed him on the podcast and also... Uh, Marco Bucci, and they both said the same thing. There's no jobs out there for animators right now. Um, if you come out of school, you know, it's like 1% or something. So then they say it's, they get into this whole thing about how it's like a popularity contest because mm -hmm. all things being equal, everyone's skill level is up here. And and so the only thing that's different is, is basically based on nepotism is, uh, you know, who you know. Um, and what a game to, pl to have to play, right? But you don't have to. That's what I'm saying. There's a choice. Right. Like, I tell people, I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Of everything that I show that's on the Internet, there's none of it that I get paid for. But right. it has brought me opportunity like no other. And like right. I was showing my wife the other day before the Comic-Con thing, I was like, here's this. What This is what I'm turning down so that you know. <laughs> that you know. And I try to tell people, it's like, I'm turning down work. Right. Work that's, like, really well paying. And right. it's like, why? Why am I doing that? Because it's not, it's not going to add to my experiences what I want. If it does, I will take it. Because, but the thing is, is I've learned that the time with my daughter is important to me. Right. You know, the time with my wife is important to me. Right. All these things factor in, and it's like, does that money really do what I need it to do? And it's like, no. If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit in my world, then why take it? Right. And so that's why I said there, there comes a time where it's like people say, well, I want the money. Well, they want the money. There's that, that's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have self-esteem enough to sit and say, I deserve better, then these kind of opportunities won't come to you, you know? Right. And it's, 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 it's like I said, I'm not sitting here saying I'm making a bazillion dollars. Cause no, I have, but the, I have yet I know to make exa money. I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Um, and I, it's happening to me, too, right now. Yes, this week I, this, this week I turned down two jobs that I would have normally taken, right. two, two freelance jobs. One of them was a huge project. It was a children's book, um, a really good one. I uh, shared it with my class at UVU, uh, showed them the letter, because then I responded back and said how I'm so worried that turning this down is going to cause you to not ask me again, because I don't know where I'll be next year. Right. But right now, I, I just am completely full. But it's all the stuff that I'm doing online and all the things I'm involved in that's starting to bring things in from all kinds of different places uh, to where I don't advertise anymore. I don't have to. I haven't ad I haven't advertised in many, many years right now. Um, and that's what I thought was the one you, when I first saw you starting to do all this stuff and post it, I was like, he's going to get hit up for tons of freelance, you know, 
there's just going to be opportunities coming in and, and knocking. And, and at that point, that the cool thing is, because it's not the job, it's not a, you know, it's not something that you've committed to do. You can take it or leave it. If it works in to your schedule, you can take it. And if not, yes. you don't have to. It has fueled my soul. That's what I've learned. You know, and like I, there's a bit. That's why I said everybody sees the drawings that I do, and I'm like, I don't get paid for that stuff. That's that's me coming out. And there's people who are like automatically will throw stuff my way because it's like, hey, I look at what you do, and I try to tell them. The stuff that you're seeing is just me exploring myself, me trying to understand my creative process, me trying to evolve that creative process. And if it gets me work, that's fine. But I'm going to do that regardless of how many people come over and like that. I've been doing it. You know, that's why I try to send people to my old blog because I'm like, and even prior to that, I was doing it. And right. so it's not like, uh, you know, uh, it's not like this has been an easy journey for me. It hasn't. It has been one of the hardest things. But it's been worthwhile. And so it's like easy to see in your beginning stages, like, ah, I want to I want to be there. I want to see we're in a society that we, we get uh, gratification in a couple of seconds. Look at what that, that dude on YouTube did for like two minutes. And it was amazing. <laughs> but it's like, oh, did you see the years and years of practice? Or, you know, it's, you know, go to the movie. The hero accomplished something in two and a half hours. You read a book and, and somebody does something. But people don't see that within themselves to be able to sit and say, you know what? I can accomplish them, but it's in the mundane. It's the thing that's like I've been do I've been doing exactly the same thing from the time I met my wife. Just hey, just draw a little bit, and it started off with let me do 15 minutes sketching. That's mm -hmm. it. And so it's like do that on the daily, and people in the beginning won't see anything, but then eventually they'll be like, well, how did you do it? How did I do what? I was already doing it. It was the love of it that kept me in the game, and that's what yeah. people need to find out for themselves. Right. What's going to keep you in the game longer than the average person? Because right. the average person doesn't want to do it anymore. You know? so, uh, so many people, I think, have that mentality of, and I, I really hope people don't think I'm bagging on studios like Disney and stuff, oh. because like people like Jake Parker say, well, you know, he couldn't be where he is today without that experience. That experience really helped define who he is. Right. But, I mean, so many people are like, if I could just get that job... And I'm like, I'm thinking, well, what if you were the janitor? Would that do it for you there? Do then you're working at Disney at the, as the janitor? Um, oh, you, no, not the janitor. You want something better? So rigor, you know, like what? What is a low, lowly job where, like, you know, they're doing character design for their portfolio, but they're going to get hired to do something lower typically to start out, right? Right. And the hope is to get moved up, but that doesn't always happen, right? And some people get complacent uh, to where they. Their creative juices are spent there at at the job, and then they don't come home and do what you did. And I think what you do, I think you, you're, <laughs> this is going to sound cheesy, but you're like that bird that needed to fly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You. Well, every, everybody has that potential in them. That's why I was saying. Yeah, but not everybody. You, you've, already, you've already done it without the studio. You've gone, you know, and you've had, you have stayed in the game for as long as you have without even stepping foot in one. And right. so, like, I look at people, and it it's you didn't let that define you. You kept moving forward with it, and there was something there that kept you in the game for that. And so, like, I look, and it's like, the dream is a great place. It's like, yeah. if you can dream, there's a lot of people that, when they don't get on this studio, they give up. I'm done. Right. I right. won't do it anymore until some external forces motivates them enough to do it. And so that's why I go back to talk to people. I say, well, why do you do it? And they'll say, well, because I love it. Well, if you love it and you're not doing it, then you have to ask yourself why you don't love yourself enough. Right. Do you right, know what I'm saying? Because it's right. like you're denying yourself. If if Christmas was every day and you knew you were going to get that gift, here's this gift, Will, that you give yourself every day. <laughs> and you're not accepting the gift a couple of the days a week, then you have to sit and go, what's wrong with me? Right. If I know that there's a gift waiting for me every day and I don't open it, what does that say about me? And that's what I had to ask myself. Right. If I don't open this gift, it's not about... I got socks. Right. Well, yesterday you didn't have socks. Enjoy the gift. Right. It's a gift. And but there like, are there are people who who ended up in the major who didn't really belong there either. I have a friend, a really yeah. good friend, a really good friend who does not enjoy drawing. Plain and simple, he doesn't enjoy drawing or painting, but that's what he went into um, as a major. But he never does it ever. <clears throat> and and, and, that's what I said. and so he went into the wrong, to me, he went into the wrong major. You know, like, if you can't love it, and I tell my students, like, I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I show them, 
I show them like sketchbooks from people who love to draw from the year before, right? And then I show them sketchbooks. This is because I give them a sketchbook assignment, and I and I say, you know, they're they're always asking, well, what are you expecting? What do you want in the sketchbook? I'm like, look at this one, look at this one. Which one loves to draw? You know, this this one's filled up. All the all the paper and all the real estate's filled up. This one has a little scribble right in the middle, and then they flip the page because it's like done. And I'm talking like two minutes of of scratch that doesn't show any passion or heart or anything and it's not I don't know how to draw it's I don't like drawing is what I I really see that in in in, in pictorial form I see I don't enjoy drawing yes and so that's why I say to people it's like what I realized for me is it's it's been that way I was drawing before that I kept drawing all those years that I, I stepped away and I didn't do anything with it I drew I drew all the time and it sufficed you know, it was enough. It was the thing that held on and said, you know what, it's not about if everybody else likes her, this and that. I kept it to myself. But there came a time, like I said, when I met my wife that I wanted, hey, I don't know anything else. This is the, can I make money off of it? That was the scariest part because then it's like now you have to judge yourself comparatively to everybody else. And right. this is where everybody implodes. It's like, oh, crap, well, this person's good and this person's good and this person's good. Well, we're in the grand scheme of things because I waited so late, now I won't do anything. Right. And so, to me, it's like, if you really love it, then what do you got to lose? I feel worse for somebody who does something that they don't love, and they're really good at it, and it's like it becomes the bait. Because that was me. I was interface guy forever, and it was like, I wanted to draw. But in the end, what I realized was, if I had to be thankful for being interface guy. Because it fueled me enough to keep me innocent and say, I'm not standing to this. I'm not going to stay with this. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to dictate my life and say who I am. But that's what I needed to say for myself. It was that bit. If I needed to go back to do interface stuff to make money, to live a decent life, mm -hmm. then that's what I need to do. But I have to have what, can you Can you, just for people who don't understand what that is, mm -hmm. can you explain it? Oh, so like... Uh, my first video game job was uh, the Van Helsing project at mm -hmm. Sapphire, and it was building the the interface, the HUD, you know, your life bars. It was, right. and what's funny was, is people were telling me this is, in video games, this is the thing that's on the screen the most time. Right. And in my mind, it was like, why are you trying to sell me on this idea? Because it's <laughs> not what I want to do. And so it was hurtful. <laughs> to see all the people doing what I wanted to do. So I was all excited. Hey, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? And the further I got into it, now when I go back to my graphic design part of it, the, the graphic design part added just as much as the drawing. Every bit of it means something. And then, like I said, even the crap tactics jobs I realized meant something it's just I didn't see it the way I needed to see it at the time so mm -hmm. when you sit and you say I want to improve it doesn't matter where the information comes from so like I tell people it's like you get people who you admire and they give you a bit of information it's like oh I'll take it mm -hmm. but get that same information from somebody you don't like and most people won't hear it because they don't like the source it's coming from. Right. So that's why I tell people, it's like when you understand wherever your information is coming from, when you're happy with yourself, the information that you want to understand will be understood, regardless of where it comes from. Regardless, mm -hmm. as long as you understand that that bit of information is going to forward you in the progress that you want. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's... It's, you know, like I said, people get caught up specifically in their techniques or they get specifically caught up in their subject. And I'll be like, well, can you take that like math? I was all like, I don't know nothing about math. But the more I start realizing how much art is like math and all of it's related and it's like, oh, well, math is a good thing. And I can see the importance of math. Now, all of a sudden, it's not as overwhelming because all it is is understanding the basics right. and then flourishing. You know, like I tell people. Same thing with drawing. It's like, if you want to draw, understand the basics. But, see, when I started off, it's like I rendered the crap out of stuff, and I didn't have an understanding of the basics. Because I was like, I wanted to get to the good stuff. Exactly. But what I realized was the good stuff was in the basics. Exactly. Right. And that's so. the thing. And I think uh, I think you're also saying that you have to, you uh, along the way, you have to prove to yourself through accomplishment that, like, Okay, so you have an accomplishment. You do something amazing, right? 
and you've proven to yourself, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this one thing, right? And then that, in going through and deconstructing what you did to get to that one thing, it gives you confidence to move to that next level. On doing something maybe not even the same. So you're looking at like you're you know you're looking at different jobs or different places within or things that you can do. And now you know all I have to do is go over here and get some get some basics, start practicing it, and I'll get good at that too. Because yes. you've proven to yourself you could get good at this other thing. And that's kind of where I am in working on this Xbox game is it, it definitely wasn't as scary as it would have been 10 or 20 years ago because I have learned so many things along the way and when I deconstruct it for my students and, and, and I go down there and teach I'm like man when did I learn all this stuff you know uh, and and but uh, that's where I think when you when you start off as a student you haven't necessarily had those experiences so you're you're thinking well I I am training to be a animator or I'm training to be this and that's who you define yourself as and I think it's so much more liberating to define yourself as a creator or as a as an artist you know something more broad where you're like you know what like it like if you if you decided one day that you wanted to throw some pots around you know like get some clay and start working and stuff I have no doubt that Mel could make some amazing pots because you'd figure it out if that was if that became the thing that just did it for you Yes. You would learn how to do to make some amazing stuff. So I guess the message I'm trying to say to, to students is like there are a lot of things you can do. You don't have to limit yourself and say, Well, I've trained, I spent all this money and which is another thing. It's another I know we're rambling on here, but I no. think another big problem for students is they've got their parents, right? <laughs> Who have, you know, sacrificed whatever to come up with money or they've taken out huge loans. They've got all these people that are like questioning, like you went into what? What's your major? You're an art major, you know. Uh, you, you better get a good job, you know. And so, don't you think that that is part of the problem too? Is oh, that, definitely. Is that, that I, because people are letting other people dictate their story? That's why I said when you sit and you realize you're the main character of your story, you can get whatever information you want, you know. And it's like. In the beginning, off the bat, most people probably won't won't let you hear the things that you want to hear in your story. It wasn't right. like I was like everybody was supportive of me. You know, like I said, I was homeless. I was strung out on drugs. I had a life that most people I thought if I let people if I let the idea of who I was in the past dictate who I became, I would still be that person. Right. But the thing is, is I was sitting here going like, when I realized I deserved more, that there's nobody more special than me, and, and I'm no more special than anybody. I deserve happiness just like everybody else does. And when I sat there and thought of my life in that instance, like that, and sat there and brought, it's, you know, like I said, I can combat that little voice in my head that says, you know what, you're not worth it. You're not good enough for this. You're not this, the bashing guy. Right. When I sat there and I said, let's keep it simple. Let's do it the 15 minutes. The, the, the voice in my head started going, well, crap, you're only doing 15 minutes? I know you can do more. <laughs> and then me temper that voice going, that's all I need because I know this will take me where I want to go. And to tell that voice, to understand what the truth was, the truth in comparison, you know, it was like when I, I noticed when I took big, grand scopes of things and said, this is what my big game plan was. I noticed that that voice was way harsher in my head. But when I sat there, like, Comic-Con was that first thing. And I was like, if I can just do a Comic-Con, you know, understand how people... It's like, all of a sudden, it was like, well, there's this Comic-Con, but then you have all these things coming at you. And why don't you do these? And you could make lots of money. <laughs> and I realized, it's like, check out focus on Comic-Con, because there's right. things that are going to come down that are going to distract you. And if right. you don't understand what your choices are, it's hard to see them. You can get off, and then it's like, then you beat yourself up even more. But when you sit and you say, I deserve it, and then tell yourself, you know what, I just want to be able to see these things and be able to make the choices and feel comfortable with my choice. Not about right or wrong, but slow down enough to sit and say, I made a choice. And whatever way it ends up being, I know this serves a greater purpose of me being somebody better. Right. And so that's where I've come from. It's like when I saw that, it's helped me to be mindful and see those things that it's like, well, if you want this, if you truly want this, you deserved it. Don't let anybody else tell you differently. If somebody sits and says, you know what, what you're doing is wrong, 
And if, okay, if it's wrong and you're hurting other people, or you're wanting to bring another artist down, then I can see it as being wrong. But if if your intentions is is I want to improve, I want my family to be happy, and if I can if I can have other artists benefit from this, so be it. How can yeah. that be a wrong goal? How can that be? How can you see yourself failing in that moment? Yeah. And so to me, it's like you know, it's like if you can get people on board with that. I believe I'm more, that was my bit of success. That was my bit of, of, hey, you know what? This is success to me. It's not just me being there and being successful and having all the trappings, but sitting here sharing my journey and sitting here talking about the human part of it. Talk about the parts where I failed. Talk yeah. about the parts where I fell down and I was scared and I cried and I bawled and I was like, how can I do this? The, the, the part that nobody else sees. Yeah. The part, like I said, art saved my life, and in my darkest times, there was always an artist. And so when I came to the realization is, is if I want to improve, it's not improving just for myself, but sitting here going like, you know what, if I can go to the store and smile and, sh and change the way somebody else looks at their day, because I'm smiling, and they get that feeling, and you know it. Because you, when you run into somebody who's like, crap, you know, like they got that <laughs> mood that just... It's like it sucks away your energy. What I realize is if by my art, I can feel myself so much that the happiness is exuded from me and that somebody else can feel it. And this is why I tell people when, when, they, when they say, man, Mel, when I talk to you, I get all excited. And I'm all like, well, the reason why I'm so excited about it is because that's my happiness. Right. And that's what people are gravitating towards. They're like, this is genuine. I'm all like amped up. Ready to go. <laughs> Even though I'm broken, you know what I'm saying? I'm broken and tired as I'll get it. But I'm so excited about this, about bringing my my world a little bit closer and understanding that my world is expanding by being able to sit and say, if another artist who's listening to this goes, hey, you know what? I'm going to choose to be happy. Then I've improved the world one person, and that's all I need. And, and to me is success because there's so many people that run around and they go, oh, because there's no jobs. Right. Oh, because there's this. That's right. And it's like, what are you adding? You're actually adding to that whole bit where that's not what... Nobody deserves to be living in that misery. Nobody deserves no. that. And as, as people that we care about, it's like we wouldn't want people we care about thinking like that. I wouldn't want my wife thinking like that. So it's like, here, let me, let me see if I can do that. Make it a point to make somebody else smile by of, the little things that I do. Of all the artists that I know that are successful, they have their, they have more of your attitude than... I've, I've probably known uh, at least a handful of artists who have been... Um, oh, I would never show anybody how I, how I work. That's a trade secret. Or, um, or uh, they're just really withdrawn into themselves. Or, like you said, they're kind of negative, like everything is bad. It's like... What you what you project is becomes your reality. Yes. And what's funny is, I know two artists that were that were killing it, that were doing amazing, and they're off. It's like they've left the planet. They're somewhere else, <laughs> as, as far as their art goes. And they were the kind that were like, "Well, why would I ever teach anyone else how to do art? Because there's art, enough artists in the world already. I don't want anybody competing with me." That attitude is so self defeating, and 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 they couldn't see it, you know. And now they're gone. Right, and my thing is, is what I've, what I've come to the conclusion through this journey of mine to this point now is, is like, be the artist I would have loved to have met. That's yeah. my, that's my goal. It's like I. That's don't, great. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like I didn't have, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have a lot. People were like, what were your influences? I was like, um, I started late in the game. I didn't know anybody's names, you know, and the few that I did, I took with me. But, but I was, I always felt because I didn't study that I was, wasn't smart. But the, the thing is, is I realized when I just bring the love, it's like, it's not about being smart. It's about being wise yeah. and being able to take the information you're getting. I'm not, I am no better than anybody else at what I do. But the thing is, is I love it so much and I share that part of it. And I say, whatever it is that you do. Regardless, if you look at somebody who's into something and and they do it, it's like it could be outside of your realm. I watched this this movie called Particle Fever the other day about the uh, Hadron Particle Collider on Netflix. Uh -huh. And I'm all like, uh, when those when those nerds got together and, and, and accomplished them, man, I was excited, dude. I was like, I'm going to be a quantum theorist. But that's what that's 
the thing about doing what you love. It's like you'll be taken care of. You just have to have faith to be taken care of. But don't <laughs> don't settle for just the, the media. I, I guess that's what I came across as. I was like, I wanted. I wanted my daughter to want something more in life, but I realized I didn't want more in my life. I was like, this is just good enough. I'll never be able to attain anything, but my daughter, she should. And it's like, well, when does it stop? Because she's going to probably... I looked at her and said, if she ever came to me one day and said, "Uh, Daddy, this is good enough, Uh and I know that there was like this great future for her and she was stunting herself, I would feel like... I want you to have more, but you can't have more if you don't want more for yourself. Right, right, and right. And so for me, it's like if I want to set that for her, I have to. I can't tell her about it. I have to do it. I have to do it myself. And then I realize that's the thing. It's my gift. If I can do it for myself, to sit and go before I walk off the face of this planet, I lived up to that goal that I wanted for my daughter, that I'm already there. And so the thing is, is Comic-Con, that experience was a bit of of my journey that made it believable because it, it showed me. It wasn't about... And, and before I go any further about what success is, most of these people who are probably watching are going like, um, I don't make money, so I want you to judge that as if it's like, hey, I want this. I haven't... I, you know, I've been the last year not making money. So, <laughs> if you think I'm successful now, just keep that in mind. Okay? Because right. my wife is like, we're burning through money. However... But the thing is... is but I, I know that I'll be taken care of as long right. as I make the decisions that are good for my world and the decisions that are good for those around me. And if I can help a stranger to benefit, I already know that my goal, my end goal is much more than I would have gotten if my end goal was just money. And, and so, I think that is exactly why I wanted to talk to you um, yeah. for, for that. Right because there. I was a minority. If I could rewind <laughs> that and play that. No. <laughs> <laughs> We need some brown in there, because I know you're already trying to get the women to come on, so... <laughs> no, I'm saying... I'm, I know. I'm saying exactly what you just said. I wish I could rewind it, because I, I won't... I'll butcher it if I try to say it again. No. Uh, so rewind this and listen to the last minute again. Uh, that's perfect. Yes. No. That I, is... I, and that's what I want people to see, because, like I said, people walk into my office, they see the new house, they see the cars, they sit and they go... Man, I want that, and I understand that. The want the, the trappings, the want the what you consider stability. How right. could you not want that? But like I say, it's like if you sit and you go, the happiness first. It's like you can't put money on that. It's no. an experience that I wish everybody could experience. Because the thing is, is the world would be a better place if everybody wanted that for themselves. Right. And then sit and said, you as my brother artist, in arms. If you make it there, it's just as much of a success for me as it is for you. Because the thing is, is if if I know that you get there and you feel this happiness, man, that's double for me. It's like yeah. it's like a, it's like multi level marketing. Yeah, dude. I will give you this happiness. And if you bring five more other people into this happiness, we'll all be happy. This is what I'm talking about. People put money in that same they put that into the same place, and it's like, right. well, if we took happiness and said, hey, look, I've got this happiness, and I'm, I'll guarantee this happiness to you. And if you bring five of your friends, your <laughs> happiness will grow exponentially. <laughs> People would do it. People right. would sit and say, hey, look, I'm going to find a happy group, and I'm going right. to be a part of that. I right. will join that group. And it's like, and then you'll see, all of a sudden, things make more sense. And then the idea, so that's why I'm all like, I, I, I have a game plan as to where I want to go in the future. But the thing is, is, it's such a big a big thing that, like I said, I've broken them down into smaller things. You know, it's yeah. like, but I, I want my decision on how I earn a living off of this to be true to me. To right. actually mindful, make the decisions, not based off of all this input coming in saying this is who you should be, but actually taking the time now because I've been blessed to be able to slow down enough right. and bless through all the things that I've gone through to sit and say, hey, you know what? Make it on purpose. Live your life on purpose. And and that's why I'm like, if I could have got that when I was younger, first, I probably wouldn't have heard it. But if there was more people that could have influenced me at that moment, rather than go into the techniques, if there were more artists that sat there and said, hey, look, I'll be more willing to give you this stuff, uh... 
uh, it would have done me great, great good. And so that's why I said for myself, it's like, if I can be that artist, be that person that I, it's not for me, it's almost like I can go back in the past and say, Mel, you were worth it. You were, you were just as human as everybody else. And I know it was scary. And that's the thing is we all artists, when we relate our story to somebody, there's always a scary moment in our lives. And every artist will go like, yeah, I had a scary moment too. Yeah. But when we relate the good moments, every artist goes, well, that would never happen to me. Right. And so it's funny. It's like, no, you got to be able to relate yourself in all aspects of being, because it's human. That's what human is being about. I just have thrown artists on the label because that's the label that has helped me to learn it. You know, learn those things that we're all the same. We're all chasing that same thing. And it's like, if you point out somebody's nerdism going, ha, 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 that's stupid. It's like... <laughs> Uh, it's the same thing. It's like you might as well point at yourself saying you're stupid, and this yeah. is where we need to get out of. You know, yeah. bring, make the ha make the happy world that we want. And as as creatives, as artists, you know, like I, I love what Jake Parker did with the getting the art out and people the art drop. Yeah, Amazing. That was, that was like brilliant. I said, yes, but this is to me is what it's all about is being able to sit and say as artists, it's more powerful. Than even what artists say it is. You know, you hear it's like starving artists and oh man, all the things you got to do to be an artist. And like I tell people, it's like, I believe it's just as important as, and relevant as any job. You know, I say as, but even more so because we have to get out of our own ways. There's an insecurity there that's there for everybody to pull apart on top of our own. Because then we look at it as like, in the grand scheme of things, what does this do? And that's why I was sitting here going like, you know, oh, if it goes for video games, it goes for children's books, it goes to these things. And I actually think it's a it's a catalyst. Our art is something that can get somebody inspired to do something more with themselves, you know. Yeah. And so it's like it does me no good to sit here and aspire for myself and, and grow when there's nobody on the back end going like, I can find better for myself too. Because the world would be a whole lot better if more people sat there and said, let me be as best as I can be. And it's not about great, but it's about if, if you don't become the Will Terry that Will Terry needs to be, if I don't become the Mel Milton that I need to be, if I sit here and hold off at half, then it's the world that misses out. That's right. That's a great you know? point. And so that's why I tell people, if you're not motivated to be that person, regardless of whatever it is you do, that should be the goal that you want. It's like, right. it's not about the job. It's not about what type of art you're doing. It's not about the techniques. It's about... Being the best that you can do and express yourself to your full potential, especially if it benefits the world around you. You That's can't right. fail at that goal. You cannot do it. That is a perfect note to end on. That, All right. Yeah. That, that, no, that wrapped it up. That is awesome. That is awesome stuff. And now yes. Guy, Guy is, is messaging us because we're no, supposed to go No, Lale just messaged me too. So oh, where, where are we going, by the way? What sounds good to you? Anything. What sounds well, good to you? Look at me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat wherever. I'll eat, you know, like I said, there's Cubbies. I love Cubbies. Uh, let's go there. Uh, we can go. There's JCW's oh, with burgers. Let's go there. You want to go JCW's? What's the next place? Uh, I was going to say there's DPG let's Steaks. Let's go there. You know, I'm a fan. <laughs> I go to all the money places. Because, like I said, I don't get out of the house much, and so if I can if I can wreck shop on my body right now with the food, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm going for a hike afterwards, so. Uh, so you want to do JCWs? Yeah, let's do there. Tell tell the guys that. That we'll be there, and uh, wish that all of you guys watching could be there too, and because it would be a really fun yes. conversation to have like a thousand people there. No, these are the best. That's why I'm like I want. That's why I feel bad for anybody that talks to me. Because I try to warn them. I'm like, I don't get out much, and I will go. I, I will. You've seen me in action, and it's like, I tell people, just tell me to shut the fuck up, you know? Because I'm overwhelming to me, do you know? It's like, it's overwhelming. But it's like, I'm so excited about sharing those things that I've learned that it's like, man, do it. I want you to feel good and laugh and have fun. Isn't that what we, that's why we got into it. One of the reasons why I got into it was like, man, I wanted the toys and have that look. Right. That happy look. Like right. that every, you look at that artist that's doing it, it's being a big kid. It's like, 
I want that. And it's like, I went and did all those things. And so it's like, if I can share my experience to help somebody get to that point, and these artist lunches and us talking is, is the kind of stuff that I feel is like fuels the soul. And I can go back into my little dark room and do my little drawings and know that it's like, I can go, I'm a, like, I'm a bear. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly, you know? Go home and hibernate. That's about as outdoorsy as I get, Mr. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> all right man thank right, you so we'll much thank you for doing this i really appreciate no, it no i really do thank you for letting me do this because right. like i said there's probably people like fell off like dude this guy i don't want to ever meet him in a dark alley <laughs> because he might start talking to me it's not about being scared but I, he might start going off so uh, i appreciate you letting me do this and if anybody gleaned anything from that i love you I love all of you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I got nothing but love. I love you guys. <laughs> so I appreciate you giving me the chance to speak my mind. All right, man. We'll see Thank, you in a little bit. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one.